Morning, everyone. Would you stand with me this morning? Thank you for being here on time. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Do you, is that what you're saying? It's good to be in the house of the Lord? Well, could you put your hands together and give the Lord a clap of praise for where I pray? Lift your hands with me as I pray. Our Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise your name. We thank you that we are here in your presence, and I thank you that wherever your presence is, there is liberty, there is freedom. We thank you for the wonderful privilege we have to see this day that you have made and to be in your house to worship you, to honor you. So, Father, we just commit our bodies, soul, and spirit unto you today. Be glorified. In us and this, through us we pray and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give praise to our God in this place. the name above all names. The holy child, gift from heaven, come let us adore. The king has come, let's worship, worship Jesus Christ the Lord. See the king. The king has come, let's magnify him. He is born this day. Come bow down Worship, worship the name above all names. The holy child, the gift from heaven, come let us adore. The king has come, let's worship, worship Jesus Christ the Lord. We will rejoice and sing his praise, sing his praise together. We will rejoice. You're the joy 
and the song that the angels sing. Glory to our God and heaven's King. Your mighty name, your mighty name, and the cry like a banner lifted high. You are great and greatly to be prayed from the from the ends of the earth, I can hear their song. Glory, glory, they say to the righteous one. Your mighty name, your mighty name. Lord, we cry like a banner lifted high. You are great and greatly to be praised. Sing of a dance.
are holy, you are holy, you alone, you alone are worthy of the glory, all the glory, I will, I will sing your praises, you are holy, you are holy, you alone are worthy of the glory. Yes, God, you alone are worthy of the glory. You alone are worthy of honor and praise. We lift up your mighty name today, Jesus. No matter what we're facing, God, we choose to give you glory. We choose to give you praise in this place. We love and adore you, Jesus. We love and adore you, Jesus. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes.
Hallelujah. Oh, give him praise as now. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory and adoration. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Do you know how much he loves you? He brings us together like this so that we can enjoy his presence, so that we can worship him with all that is inside of us. Let's sing it one more time. And I invite you, just lift your hands up and just worship him with all that is within you. And we give you all the glory. We give you all. Let me lead you in prayer. Father, we thank you for bringing us together today where we can lift up the mighty name of Jesus, the name that is above all other names. And we can give you praise and adoration and you inhabit our praises. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us today. Now we just ask you to continue to touch each and every one of our lives with your love, and we give you honor. Amen and amen. Let's put our hands together and appreciate it. Great to see you. Hallelujah. Wonderful to see each and every one of you, but I think there's friends that want to shake your hand this morning. Why don't you tell them God bless you. You're looking good today. Don't lie. Just tell them the truth, how good they look today. Thank you so much, singers. Don't you appreciate them? Every week they're here helping us to be able to focus our attention on the Lord and be able to worship Him appropriately. We're so glad that you're here today. And if this is your first time here at BCF Church, we welcome you and say thank you so much for being our guest today. 
We trust that you'll enjoy every aspect of our time together. One of the things we love to do is we prepared a connection card for all of us, not just the first-time guests, but for everyone. And it's in the seat back in front of you. If you'd pull that connection card out for me, please. Uh, that, I see some of you moving. To, to pull it out for me. That's it. And then you'll notice there's a place there for your name. Please fill that in so that we can uh, know that you're here today. And first-time guests, check off the box that says, I am a first-time guest, okay? That way we know that you've been here. We can acknowledge you. I can send you a little note. So put down your uh, information so that I can connect with you, please. And then there's other information you can uh, fill in on the front, but also on the back you'll see more things. And this is where I really want to encourage church family. This is where you put your prayer request, your praise reports, so that we can keep in touch, we can join our faith with you, we can pray along with you. Every working day we're praying for the prayer requests and believing God for you that God will continue to do the great work He's doing in your life. How many like the Christmas season? Can I see your hands? Oh, yeah. We love it. We love it because it's cold. Is that right? Snowy? No, it's not because of that. It's because it's a time of joy where we focus on the good things that Jesus has done for us, coming, and all of, all of the, the festivities that go along with families as well. Yeah, again, one of the areas that we love to uh, highlight in our services is that God cares for families. Dr. Harrison is here today to share our family focused moment. Would you please put your hands together and welcome him? Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord, church? Come on, are you good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Why not turn to the person next to you and say, It's good to see you in the house of the Lord? Well, I want to take you right into family focus today. And I want to talk to you about preparing your garden. You know, interestingly enough, when God created the heaven and the earth, the Bible says that God created everything. He created the garden, and uh, he didn't just put man in the garden. What he did is he prepared the garden first. You know, God created the rivers and the water fountains and the ponds, and he created the flowers, and he, he created all the fruits and, and all the berries and all the goodies in the garden. I can just see God making sure all the flowers had all the, uh, the colors that were needed to make the garden so beautiful before he put mankind in it. And I thought to myself, you know, relationships are the same. God prepares a, a garden for our lives when we meet each other. And we come into the, the garden and a lot of times in life, situation rises up. Just like in the Garden of Eden, a situation arose, but God didn't turn him, his back from mankind, God continue making a plan that man will have relationship with him. And when I think about relationship, I think the same concept. You know, maybe sometimes we have these weeds that grow up in our relationship that try to spoil the garden. Weeds can be, for example, maybe a difference of opinions, maybe financial stressors, maybe some issues that is, you know, like uh, sometimes we have all these things that we get that corrupts our mind. One thing I've learned about gardening is we can do two things with it. If you're like my wife, she's not here today. <laughs> but uh, she would probably ignore the weeds and let the weeds grow up. And what, you know as well as I do, when weeds grow up, it kind of kills the garden. So I don't like weeds at all. I will pull them out. I like to have the garden groomed and make sure looking very nice. And relationships are the same. Now when I look at, re at these weeds that comes up, I don't look at them as weeds, as something negative. I look at it as something positive. I look at it as a way that I can gain more experience so I can move on. Do you know, I was telling Kathleen, if we knew what we knew 29 years ago, I don't know where our marriage would be today. I think we'll be teenagers. <laughs> because love is such an amazing thing and relationship is such an amazing thing when you learn to understand that when the weeds are in there, the weeds are not to destroy you, the weeds are there as opportunities so you can gain more experience. Come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> it helps us to move and to mature and to become better and better so you can raise a, an amazing family. You can have an awesome relationship. Every day you cannot wait to huddle, cuddle, and snuggle with your wife. Not with another wife or not with another husband, but your own <laughs> Do 
Too many of peace, too many today, too many people looking for somebody else, husband and wife. Stick to your own. <laughs> Pull out the weeds that are standing in the way. Let me give you some quick tips here. Are you ready for it? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to give you some tips anyways. Number one, we all have weeds in our garden. Don't try to pretend that there is no weeds. Look at it as an opportunity because you're going to gain something better. When you pull the weeds out, you're going to give room to make sure the flowers even blossom even better. That the weed doesn't come and choke up the flowers and destroy your wife, your husband, the relationship with your children. Number two, work on keeping the home happy. You know, one of the things Kathleen and I have decided is that the home needs to become a magnet. It needs to be a place of tranquility when the kids are home or when we're home. We just want to be home and enjoy the atmosphere of God. Start playing some music and start creating the atmosphere of worship. Amen. Don't build a throne for the devil. Build a throne for God. <laughs> And number three, avoid looking at the past gardens. You know, sometimes we keep carrying, well, you know, in the past it was like this. I don't know if it's going to be, forget the past. Start a whole new chapter. The new year is coming, 2020. Step into it with a new awesome garden. Amen. God bless you. Let's welcome Pastor Randy and Pastor Jill. How many love gardening? Yeah, I, like I know how to grow weeds. We're very good at growing weeds, <laughs> not so much at the food side of it. You know, when we come together like this, we come as a big family, and if it's your first time here, welcome to the family. But I see, uh, <laughs> I see young ones here that are just in transitioning in their lives, uh, Tyra and Nathan, uh, just stand up for a minute, uh, they're, they're getting married soon, and... Uh, <laughs> We're excited about that. But this week, this week, Pablo and Lauren, come on, stand up as well. They got engaged this week as well. Woo-hoo! Praise the Lord. Congratulations. So lots of family things happening with you, new ones. And yesterday... Yesterday, we had a great time with the prime timers. If you weren't here, you missed it. <laughs> you want to find out what's happening because they're doing lots of great things. I mean, even, they've even, Pastor Reed's even got September booked already. So what's, no excuses. What's happening in September? Oh, September, we're going to Sight and Sound in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yes. And we are going to see an amazing play and have fun together. And um, those of you that don't want to have coffee with Pastor Reed, you can come shopping with me. But it, w it was so good to see so many here yesterday, and the children did so well for us, and it was just a blessed time to be together. We're, as many of you know, we love to invest all around the world in what God is doing. Uh, next week, our friends Marvin and Anna Enos from Thailand are going to be here with us, and so we're excited to be able to hear some of the good things happening there. And we invest in what they're doing on a monthly basis and, and really believe in them as people. They're people of integrity. And so when we receive our offering here, it's not just to pay for the lights. And even you saw they went out for a little while. Praise the Lord, they're back on. It's not just for those type of things. It's so that we can touch lives all around the world. So I want to challenge you today. Let's give to the Lord. You know, there's some... Uh, Offering envelopes in the seat back in front of you. Pastor Brian, just pass me one of those. I think there might be one in my folder there. And uh, we want to, want to encourage you to let's honor the Lord in what he has placed in our hands. God, did you know God trusts you? He gives you health and strength to be able to work, to be able to earn finances. He owns it all, but he gives it to us so that we can have control over it and make the decision. And making decisions is what God loves to empower us to do. So whether this is your first time at BCF or whether you've been here every week, I want to encourage you. Let's bring an offering into the Lord or bring in our tenth, the tenth that God has asked us to bring back to him. And let's honor him with that today. As we move towards the end of the year, we're going to finish very strong in our giving. We're going to finish strong in our sowing out from BCF Church as well and be able to honor him in all that we do. 
We'd like to make it as easy as possible so no one is excluded from being able to receive a blessing from the Lord. So we have uh, a variety of ways to give. We still accept cash here. I know some places don't like it anymore because you have to count it. <laughs> but we, we receive cash. We have uh, debit machines that will be open out in the foyer after our point of sale machine. And then we have the text to give here that's on the screen that I find the most convenient. And so let me give you just a couple moments to, to complete your preparation. Make sure you put your name and address down so we can receipt you appropriately at year end. Thank you so much. see some of you still writing. We'll just wait a couple more moments. You see the children are coming in. We're going to have a great time together with them this morning. They've been preparing for the last couple of months. I see parents and grandparents here and young people coming, looking, saying, oh, I wish I was here and I could have been part of it. Well, Easter's coming. We're going to have more things happening throughout the year. And this is, we, we love having children here where parents and grandparents bring in the children. Why? So that they can learn more about the Lord, but they can also exercise the gifts that are in them. We find many are talented, but they don't have opportunity to express those talents and gifts from God. And so we're determined here at BCF to give them that opportunity. Why don't you lift your offering up before the Lord today? And Jill, please give thanks. Lead Father, us. we just thank you and praise you. You're such a good father. And Father, as we bring our tithes and offerings to you, we thank you that even during this Christmas season, many shall come to know you. We thank you, Father, for the opportunities you give us. And as we surrender our lives to you, we surrender everything we have. So, Father, accept what we give today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ushers, please serve us. Thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity. We'll give you just a moment to complete your collection of the gifts. I want to talk a little bit about what's going to happen next. We're going to turn all the lights off for just a moment while we have a transition for the children coming up on stage, so don't be frightened if that's, if that's what you see. And then we're going to have a drama that's about 30, 35 minutes long. And all of the children from youngest all the way up through junior highs will be part of that. And so you feel free to take pictures if you want to or to appreciate them after they've finished their, their numbers. And we'll have a great time. I'll come up at the end and just say a, a few closing remarks and then we'll pray. And if you, when you come, whether it's this Sunday or any Sunday, if you come and you need prayer specifically, just come up at the end of the service up front, and one of the pastoral team members will be here, and we'll pray with you. So I don't always announce it every week, but that's, uh, that's always here for you. Now, friends, look at all these children. Let's put our hands together and appreciate them. Thank you. Attention Christmas cruisers, today's excursions leave in five minutes. If you're snorkeling Flying Fish Cove, you'll begin on the Lido deck. If you're sampling the island's Christmas cuisine, you'll begin in the ship's galley.
you're shopping on Christmas Island, you'll travel aboard the SS Mango. Please meet the Mango's captain and first mate at the end of the gangway. Enjoy your beautiful Christmas holiday at sea. Took out all loose packages. Captain, this doesn't look good. Whoa! The storm came out of nowhere. Are we gonna crash, Captain? Not if I can help it. Whoa! Captain, this wave is gonna broadside the SS Mango. Everyone, hold your breath. That was a rocket. I can't believe we made it. I've never seen a storm like that. I've been captain for 20 years and I haven't either. Did we all make it? I'm pretty sure we did, but let me count. 10, there are 11 of us to board this is Mango. Who's missing? It looks like all the passengers are here. What about the crew? That's just me and my first mate, Billy. Did anyone see him after the boat went down? No, no. If something happens to him, I'll never forgive myself. I couldn't have saved the SS Mango without him. Billy! Billy! Billy. Oh, here you guys are. Billy, where were you? I was so busy thinking, I got lost. I was trying to remember something I was supposed to do, but I forgot. Well, whatever it was, it isn't important. Why don't you head back to the crash site and steal Sajiba from the Mango? Aye, aye, Captain. The cruise of a lifetime celebrate Christmas on the biggest cruise ship in the Caribbean, the Yuletide. It's all my fault. I was the one who saw the brochure. The fabulous charter cool. yacht, the SS Mango, will take you and your 10 lucky companions on the cruise of a lifetime you'll never forget. You gotta give them credit. They nailed that last part. Now come on, you sad little rain clouds. Looks like we've got a bad case of the Mondays. It's Friday. Who are all these sad little people? Who are you? You know who I am. So I'm Jessica, the cruise director on the Yuletide. I have the privilege of ensuring everyone has a super duper wonderful time on their cruise. Well, Jessica, the first part shopping on Christmas Island was good, but the second part getting shipwrecked, not so much. Well, now you're getting a free tour of a primitive island. So how long do you think it is before they realize we're missing? I can assure you by seven o'clock on, cl on Christmas Eve, they'll know something's wrong. Seven What's so special about that? How are you gonna know when that is? All our phones are over there in the water. How do we tell time now? That's when the big Christmas show on the Yuletide is supposed to start. Emma, Sophie, and Trent are our actors and musicians, as well as the stars of our show. Don't worry, people. You won't miss the show. As soon as the storm hit, I had Billy send an SOS. We'll be rescued in no time. But just to be a little sure, we should probably make some preparations. Who are you three? I'm Chloe. This is Olivia Mason. We're five riders from Chicago City. Or we were. Perfect. I'll have you three look for supplies. The wood from the mango most likely washed up on shore. Are you sure you don't want the firefighters to, to forage for food? Not when we've got musicians. Musicians know what it's like to be starving. We got it. Who are you? I'm Jasmine. I'm with the ship's drama troupe. Are you an actor or a musician? Neither. I'm the ship's mime. A mime? Come sound over here. What do you want me to do, Captain? I can't really think of anything for a mime to do. So why don't you just stand there? And do nothing? But Captain, a mime's a terrible thing to waste. I can't just do nothing. Oh, yes, you can. I just encased you in a glass box. Captain! 
Captain, I'm a building contractor. The name's Logan. This is Kelly, the other builder. You give us the right materials and we'll have a shelter built by nightfall. You got that right. You need it, we build it. You'll get them. Come on, guys. On the off chance the rescue goers don't get here tonight, we have food, water, and shelter. Everyone, I found a fishing net. We can catch all the fish we need. Yay! We found coconuts! Yay! Yay! More coconuts! Yay! And more coconuts! Uh. Uh. Guys, look at me, I found a lobster! Billy, that's not... Ah, that's spider! Ah! tasting fresh water. And it's free with the Yuletide's new adventure tour package. Yay! I just want a package of canned food washed up on shore. I hope it's It's tuna. Oh. We're safe, we're safe! What, a ship? No, we found mango! And this week! Progress here. If we were stuck on this island for a while, it wouldn't be that bad. Captain, are you making a fire for us to roast marshmallows? What a super idea! No, Jessica. I'm building a signal fire so when the rescuers come, they'll know what to have the island we're on. But if we're the woods all waterlogged. Captain, Captain, great news! What is it, Billy? Have the rescuers come? No, but I finally remember what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to send that SOS after the storm hit. Billy. I'm so relieved. That was driving me crazy. No SOS? No rescuers? No problem. I just found one glass bottle washed up on shore. A message in a bottle? It's already floating away. Did you write down our position accurately? Yeah, I got it right here. It says, help. Crew members and passengers shipwrecked of SS Mango. Send help. I mean, the coins are right here. And what did you put in the bottle? What do you mean? That exact message? Well, you write the message, you cork the bottle, you throw the bottle in the ocean, and then you put the message in the bottle. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. for message in the bottle is to put the message in the bottle before you throw the bottle. I should know that. Who are you? The name's Johnny, Johnny Coconut. I'm what you call the resident of this island. Resident? You live here on purpose? <laughs> a purpose? I don't know their choice. I was sailing solo on my sailboat. Got hit by a ferocious storm. Been here ever since. How long have you been here? I left in 1998. I think I'll come back by 2000. Oh, oh no. no. Is your name really Johnny Coconut? That's the super duper's name. You're such a hoot. I thought this day would never come. I'm finally being rescued. <laughs> well, Johnny. I hate to break it to you, but we may be just as lost no, as you are. We thought we'd be getting rescued any minute now, but we're not so sure. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I hope we can make it back to the ship for Christmas. My whole family is waiting for me. We brought our Christmas stockings on the cruise and everything. So we really might miss Christmas? No big Christmas show? No big Christmas dinner? No presents, no Christmas trees. Now come on, you deserted island downers. We might miss Christmas as we know it, but we can have it right here. Yay! Yay. Yeah, way to go. Wow. Well, guys, this might not be where you want to spend Christmas, but this is the best Christmas I've had in years. I bet you've been kind of lonely. Boy, have I. For the longest time, I was doing a Christmas gift exchange. Stopped doing it a few years back, so I kept getting the same gift over and over again. It got so annoying. Do you have any idea where we are? Afraid not. Guys, this is Christmas Island, where we were. Okay. And this is the ship. Mm -hmm. And I think this is us. So we're stuck on an uncharted island? But these islands are legendary. I've suspected we've landed on one of the fabled ice cream islands. So we're castaways on a desert island? Captain, the shelter's complete. On time and under budget. Built it completely from the wood from the mango that washed up on shore. I'll miss the mango. She's a strong boat. Look, we found mangoes. Yay! Yay! Guys, this is all well and good, but we have to find a way to save ourselves. Listen, you have to face the facts. There are miles of empty water around us. We have absolutely no way to save ourselves. Since we're all here and we've got the place decorated for Christmas, and we even have a brand new audience, have a little taste of the Christmas show. Yeah. 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 It all began long, long ago. God had promised rescue. The people are waiting, waiting for the promised rescuer to come.
Wow, I never thought of Christmas story being told as a rescue story. The prophets foretold the coming Messiah, but then God was silent for 400 years. But many continued to believe in God's promise to send a rescuer, and they kept waiting and watching for the Messiah. And speaking of waiting and watching, I finally got a good fire signal going. They should be able to see this for miles. We've got to keep this burning night and day. <gasps> no! 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 And now the fire's out. The firefighters are back. I totally forgot they were here. Great job, firefighters. Way to go. Not to complain or anything, but that was our signal fire. Sorry, it's just the reflex. We see a fire, we put it out. You travel with your fire clothes? You didn't think we leave them at home, did you? Yes, actually, yes, I did. Well, we got all the bags off the SS Mango and everybody got theirs. Wait, even the... Mom! Does she think she's pulling a real rope? Speak up, we can't hear you. What's she saying? There's trouble on the other beach. Billy has to plant fescue? Fescue, isn't that some kind of grass? No way, he has a plan to rescue us. He took 50 balloons. 50 balloons? From the decorations. He filled them with hot air. He says he's going to float to civilization and get help. You guys keep doing what you're doing. I'll go stop him. I'll, I'll go, go with you. you. So we left off where God's like people that. were waiting for 400 <laughs> years. And I thought I'd been waiting for a long time to get rescued, but 400 years? That's on a whole nother level. That's why it was such awesome, amazing news when the angels showed up near Bethlehem announcing the Messiah was just born. The angels told the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. It's so dark. For a, no wait. Today in the city of David, a child is born.
You know, I learned all that when I was younger, but I haven't thought about any of it in a long time. Like the angel says to the shepherd, Johnny, this is good news for all people, including Johnny Coconut. I like to believe that, but I think I'm one of those people that don't deserve God's love because of all the wrong things I've done in my life. Billy, what happened? That boy's as messed up as a kite in a hailstorm. Billy, you look fabulous, doesn't he, everyone? Yeah, not really. Hmm. Oh, I didn't get there in time before I lifted off, and he fell. I was sure the blue was going to take me 100 miles. How far did it take you? About 100 feet. I would not have been able to see him if he wasn't carrying a flashlight. The flashlights were for signaling airplanes. He only got about 20 yards offshore before the balloon started popping. You're lucky they didn't all pop at once. Well, it was a good try, Billy. Yeah. yeah. It was a good try. Why don't you guys join us? We're almost at the climatic moment of our Christmas show. Okay, but all the plans to save us has fallen flat anyways. Well, you might like this story then, Billy, because it sure seems like God's in the rescue business, even though it doesn't happen at all like we're expecting. What do you mean? Well, people are lost in darkness, just like us. God promised a savior, but they had to wait a really long time. Later, an angel appeared to a young girl named Mary and told her that this long-awaited baby would be born, and she would name him Jesus. When the savior was born, when Mary and Joseph were far from home, just like us, God filled uh, angels fi filled the sky and told a bunch of si simple shepherds that the Savior was born in Bethlehem. Listen, we're going to need a little help with this next song. What do you need? We need you, three firemen, to be our shepherds. Here are some ropes. Captain, I need you, Jasmine, and Logan to be the sheep, cow, and donkey. Billy, you can be the angel. Pretend you're high up in the sky with a bright light. I think I can pretend that. Perfect. This will be just like our big Christmas show on the Yuletide. Yay! Yay!
had to say. Well, that was an awesome rescue story right here, right there. Even if we don't get off this island, I'm so glad you guys came. Look. What is it? It's a bright light in the sky. Another angel announcement? This is just like our big Christmas show. The prophet Isaiah said, people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those who land, on those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Or maybe a star? Like the wise men who came to Jerusalem when Jesus was born, asking, where's the one who has been born king of the Jews? <laughs> We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Oh, that scared me. Okay, wait, wait. Guys, I don't think that's a star. We're safe! Are you from the SS Mango? A lot of people back on the old tire are going to be very relieved. Everyone was worried sick. They're all praying in return, even the mine. Thank you for rescuing us. We tried everything we could think of, but we just couldn't save ourselves. We're glad we found you. Hey, aren't there supposed to be 11 people here? Yeah. I found 12. Oh, the extra one is me. I got lost a long time ago, probably before you were born, I suspect. Whatever. The name is Johnny, Johnny Coconut. Nice to meet you. No what? way. How long have you been here? Uh, oh, these are just biblical costumes. We've been helping with rehearsal. Why don't you all pack your things? We'll fly you back to the old time. I bet there's going to be an even bigger Christmas Eve party tonight. <laughs> Does it matter? What made you search over here? The captain said we're too far. You were. We weren't searching over here. What? No, this is way above our search area. We were on our way back to get fuel. Then how did you see us? Our signal fire went out. We're still not sure. The captain swears he saw a flashlight glowing in the middle of the sky. Well, what do you know? Okay, folks, you saw us lower down from the helicopter. That's because there isn't enough room on this small island to let. So we'll need to hoist you up one at a time. We'll attach you to this harness with this rope. I'll be right beneath you, but you gotta hold on tight. We'll have you aboard in no time. Another thrill ride for no additional cost. Yay! Yay! What? Come on, guys. We've got quite the story to tell. Wow.
Well, that's a Christmas I'll never forget. The day I got rescued, I don't just mean from the island. I'm afraid I've forgotten the real good news of Christmas. The good news filled with peace, love, and joy for all the people. Because of those, because those castaways reminded me. That baby grew into a man who lived a sinless life. He died on the cross and he rose from the grave. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It's like the rescuers told us, we'll save you, but you got to grab on tight. The birth of Jesus was such good news for all people because all who grab on to him through faith are rescued from sin and death. Run. I helped the captain rebuild the SS Mango, and we're running excursions to that famous island where the rescue story happened. Hey, you feel like a Christmas cruise? Come on, let's go. Way over there. <laughs> Pastor Carey, many others, Mona, lots of the young ones, young adults as well, young ones involved. Come on, put your hands together one more time as they leave the <laughs> sanctuary here. Isn't it great to see how they can portray a wonderful story like this? See, this is a reality of the season. You know, lots of places have little Christmas concerts and such. And people sing and do what they do. But our young people here 
desire to actually tell a story that makes a difference. When I talk about Jesus and rescuing, that is the reality of what he came to do, isn't it? He didn't come just to be a little baby in a manger. That's often what people focus to at Christmas time. But he actually came to rescue all of humanity, to take us away from the penalty of sin that every one of us deserves. And Jesus came to pay that price. Wonderful. Is he still a rescuer today? He is, isn't he? But what has he come to rescue us from today? Well, he comes to rescue us from sin that tries to live in each and every one of us. How many of you have wanted to do good and didn't do it? Four of you. All right. All of us put our hands up, don't we? See, that's the reality of where we live. Jesus came to do something. He came to change our lives. He didn't, did not only come to rescue us from a time away from him in hell and take us into heaven with him, but he came to actually rescue us from our own desires as well. In the Bible, it says this, for our sake, God, he made him, Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What does that mean? It means he came to exchange his life for ours, that we may receive his righteousness, his right standing with God, but his ability to live above the circumstances around us. When you want to get angry, draw on the life of God. Focus on what he's already said, and he'll help you. He'll strengthen you. He'll bring his life, his righteous life, inside of you. I was reading in Philippians. Listen to what it says. I once thought these things around me were valuable. All of the things that we love, the, 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 the stuff that we have, even the, the notoriety or the praise that we get from other people. He says, but now I consider them worthless because of what Jesus has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. Listen. For his sake, I've discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. Is that your desire as well? That was the Apostle Paul that said those words. He continued. He says, uh, I no longer count on my own righteousness, on the things that I do right through obeying the law, but rather I become righteous through faith in Jesus. For God's way of making us right with himself depends totally on him. That's the message today. Jesus came to rescue every one of us. We've seen it portrayed in the children. You see how much fun they were having on stage Young ones wanting to dance when it was singing time and sing when it was dancing time. See, their focus is not just on doing everything right. It's on letting the life that's inside of them pour out and touch us. And so today, my friends, I have a challenge for you. As we go into our Christmas season, let's focus on Jesus who came to rescue us. He can still rescue us today. Even though we may have surrendered our life to him, he wants to free us from the bondage that we try to come on us, the emotions that we try to force onto others, how we try to hurt the people around us, maybe because they've hurt us. But his righteousness is here for every one of us. All we need to do is draw on him. Is that right? We just need to ask him to change us to be more like Jesus every single day. Could I lead you in a prayer today? Maybe bow your head with me. And we're going to talk to our Lord, our Savior. We're going to talk to our Father in the name of Jesus. Why don't you join me? Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me, for seeing my whole life. 
all the things I've done, even the thoughts that I've had, and still loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to take away my sin, the, the separation with you, and make a way, Lord, so that I can be your son, your daughter. I surrender my life to you. Go ahead, just tell him, Lord, I surrender my life to you. Rescue me from myself, from sin, and help me to live for you from this day forward. I receive you, Jesus, as the Lord of my life, the one who gives me direction, the one who helps me and strengthens me, the one that helps me overcome in every area of life. Thank you, Lord, for loving me so much. I will live for you. Amen. Amen. On your connection card, pull it out again, please. Let me see mine. Pull that connection card out again. I want you to look at the back of it. Maybe we can turn the house lights up just a little bit more. But on the back, it talks about some things to do. It says at the top, this week I'll commit to a memory verse, one of the ones that was said on stage there to memory, but it says, I will tell someone about God's rescue plan. How many will do that this week? Will you, will you tell someone else about his rescue plan? See, I see some of the young ones will. I think some of us older ones need to do that as well. And then it says that uh, I'll help someone that, that I know that's in need. Can you help people this week? Maybe you can do something that uh, makes their life just a little bit easier. And do it in the name of Jesus. In that second part there, it says this. I'm interested in accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. Perhaps you prayed that prayer that we prayed here just now. You prayed that for the very first time. Then put a check mark on that portion right there, please. And we have a little booklet that we want to give you. And we're going to have it right at the very back of the, the uh, foyer of the entranceway there in our little coffee shop. And if you'll bring your connection card with that check mark on it out there, they'll give you that booklet and just explain a little bit to you. And then it also says, if you want to rededicate your life, that you can serve Jesus. See, God loves every one of us, doesn't he? How much we appreciate our children. They are, many of them are very innocent. And we want to encourage that in them that they continue to grow in God. So parents, thank you so much for helping them. Let's put our hands together for all the parents that helped the children learn their parts. And why don't you, Casey, come up on stage with us. Let's stand together. I want to encourage each of you to come back and join us each Sunday throughout December. Bring a friend along with you. We apologize for some of our parking. As you know, it's just a little bit Shaky out there some areas. We're going to work on it this week, in fact, out on, the, out on the field, the secondary area. You see our building is going up, and uh, we're, we're blessed that God is helping us to build an affordable housing building for our city. It's going to be a year before it's ready, but we'll keep doing what we're doing. Let's lift our hands together. Father, thank you so much for my friends here today. Thank you for each and every person that's come, all the children all those that are a little bit older and all of the, even the oldest ones, the grandparents and others. I just thank you for them. And I ask you now that as we leave this place, we would never leave your presence. But Lord, you would come with us and lead us and guide us on how to live. Help us each and every day. Keep us safe. Keep us healthy. And in the very center of your will, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. I do, before you slip out, before we sing our last song, I want to let you know something special that's happening. We see changes from time to time in the congregation, and uh, Pastor Brian and Angela have been part of us for many years, and as some of you know, they have a, a very thriving business as well. That business is now taking them down to Niagara area, so they're moving down to Niagara the end of January, so they'll be heading out tomorrow on a little a break, 
and then back with us throughout the month of January, and then the first weekend of February, we're going to have a special time and just bless them as they move down to Niagara. So when you see them, tell them God bless you, and we're going to miss you. So let's go out singing and rejoicing and worshiping Jesus. Does that sound like a good deal? Let's do it. Let me hear you sing. <laughs> 